All right, so today we're going to talk about the um, building blocks of matter, atomic mass, and isotopes. So before we talked about what happens when the protons and the electrons aren't equal, right? So now we're going to talk about what happens when the, proto when the protons are the same but the neutrons change, okay? So protons and neutrons are grouped together in the center, and that center is called what? What's the center called? Nucleus. Nucleus. Very good. In the nucleus, okay? So we've got protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and the electrons are around the nucleus, in levels, sublevels, orbitals, electron shells, right? In the two in the first, eight in the second, right? Okay? <clears throat> we have three subatomic particles, and they have different weights. Now, if you look at the neutron, the neutron is 1.6749286 times 10 to the negative 27. Okay, so it's super, super small still. But if you look at it compared to the electron, that is 9.1093896 times 10 to the negative 31st, right? Then you can see that it is significantly larger. Because remember, this is four places, right? Four places to the left smaller than the proton and the neutron, okay? So the proton and the neutron weigh about the same, right? And the electron is significantly smaller. Now you don't have to memorize those weights. What I want you to know is that the proton and the neutron are similar, right? Almost equal, about equal, and that the, that the electron is significantly lighter, right? All right, atomic number. What is the atomic number equal to? What is the atomic number equal to? What does the atomic number tell us? The number of, the number of protons, right? The atomic number tells us the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. Does the atomic number change? Does the atomic number change? No, okay, the number of protons never changes. It's always the same. It identifies the element, right? The number of protons identifies the element. So the number of protons never change. Can the number of electrons change? Can we lose and gain electrons? Yes, yes we can. That gives us ions, right? And what we're going to talk about today is that the number of neutrons can also change. So the only subatomic particle that is fixed, that never changes, is the proton. Right? That's the only one that never changes. Now, the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Okay? And we use one mass unit for each proton and one mass unit for each neutron. Okay? So if we look at this one right here, what would the mass be? Well, we have one, two, three protons, right? Four, five, six, seven if we add the neutrons. So three protons and four neutrons would give us an atomic mass of what? Three plus four would give us what? Seven. So the atomic mass for this particular element is going to be seven. Now, can I tell from this picture what element I have? Can I tell from this picture what element I have? Yes, I can, because the atomic number is the number of protons, and the atomic number never changes, okay? It is the identity of the element. This particular element has three protons, okay? Which means it has atomic number three. So what is the element? Lithium, right? You look at your periodic table of elements, for number three, and that's lithium. This is an atom of lithium. All right, isotopes. Y'all keeping up with me? Are we good? Am I going too fast, too slow? We're good? All right. Atoms that have the same number of protons but differing number of neutrons are isotopes, okay? Any atom that has the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons is an isotope. Now it has to have the same number of protons because that identifies the element, right? But the neutrons can change. 
So we have here three different isotopes, three different isotopes of hydrogen, right? This first one has one proton and no neutrons, right? The second one has one proton and one neutron. And the third one has one proton and two no neutrons. Now they're all hydrogen, which means they all have one proton because they're all hydrogen, right? But because they're isotopes, they have different number of neutrons, okay? Now, if the atomic mass is equal to protons plus neutrons, what's the atomic mass for this one? How many protons does it have? One. one. How many neutrons? Zero, right? So what's the atomic mass? One. One, okay? So look at this one. We have one proton. We have one neutron, so what's the atomic mass? One. Two. two, right? Proton plus neutron, two, okay? This one, one proton, two neutrons, so one plus two gives us an atomic mass of what? Three. Three, very good, three, okay? These are isotopes, okay? Now these are naturally occurring different forms of the same atom. Okay, they're all hydrogen. How do I know they're all hydrogen? Because they all have just, yes, one proton. All right, now, isotope notation. Here's how we notate this. We put the atomic mass on the top and the atomic number on the bottom, okay? Remember, this first one has an atomic mass of one and an atomic number of one, and then the chemical symbol. The second one of hydrogen, deuterium, had an atomic number of two, and an atom, or excuse me, atomic mass of two, and an atomic number of one, okay? For this one, hydrogen, tritium, atomic, num or atomic mass of three, atomic number of one, okay? All different forms, right, of hydrogen, okay? Now, Protons don't change, right? So you notice atomic number for every one of this is one, okay? Neutrons do change. So how do I find the neutrons using this isotope notation? Well, I take the top number, subtract the bottom number. One minus one gives me what? Zero. This isotope has zero neutrons. Two minus one gives me one. This isotope has one neutron. Okay. Three minus one gives me what? Two. This isotope has what? Two neutrons, right? Atomic mass is equal to protons plus neutrons, right? Atomic number is equal to protons. Which one doesn't change? What never changes? The number of protons. The atomic number never changes. All right, so this is basically the same thing that I just went over. Protons plus neutrons on the top, right? Protons on the bottom, chemical symbol, right? Now this is a couple of different isotopes of carbon. Have you ever heard the term carbon-12, carbon-14? Okay, sometimes in history you talk about carbon dating, but when they figure out how old things are, they use carbon-14 for that. All right, now, having said all of that, look at your periodic table, okay? You notice on your periodic table, the atomic masses that are on here are not whole numbers. Did you notice that? They're not whole numbers, they're decimals, okay? The reason is, what's on the periodic table is the average atomic mass. So it takes all of the naturally occurring isotopes and it take, gets an average, it calculates an average. And that's the number that we have at the bottom, okay? It's the average of all the isotopes, okay? Now, the average is by percent abundance, okay? What does that mean? Which ones occur the most, right? So 95% of the hydrogen is hydrogen 2, right? 
then we multiply that one by 95%, right? To get the actual abundance, okay? Actually, it says that 99.9% is this one, 0.015 here, and 0% of that one. So we multiply it times the percentage, and then add it together so that the average more accurately depicts the most abundant. What does the word abundant mean? The most common, the most frequently found, right? Those are the most abundant. All right, questions? Now, without doing a whole lot of calculations to find which one's the most abundant, we can easily see that by rounding the decimal on the periodic table, right? So if you look at hydrogen on the periodic table, it's atomic mass, average atomic mass is 1.00795. What would that round to? What whole number would that round to? One, right? So that means that this hydrogen one is the most abundant form of hydrogen. Now let's look at carbon. You see carbon number six? Carbon's average atomic mass is 12.0108. What would that round to if we rounded that to a whole number? 12, right? So that means that the most abundant or the most frequent or the most common form of carbon is carbon 12, okay? So that's how we can figure out what the most abundant is without actually doing all of this math. It's just by rounding the average atomic mass to the nearest whole number. Yes? Got it?